In this video, we're given some information about a square and how it changes, and we're asked to find the side length of the original square. Each side of a square has been increased by 6. When this happens, the area gets multiplied by 16. So we've got this small square and then this bigger square. And we don't really know much about the small square, so how about we say it's an x by x square. That gives it an area of x times x, or x squared. On the bigger square, the square is increased by 6. Each side is increased 6. So it was x. To increase it by 6, we have x plus 6 on both sides. Its area, then, is x plus 6 times x plus 6, or x plus 6 squared. We are told how these areas then compare each other with each other, is when it got bigger, the area was multiplied by 16. In other words, if we took the smaller area, the x squared, and multiplied it by 16, that would equal or give us the bigger area, x plus 6 squared. This gives us a quadratic which we can solve. Whoops. That's not working out as well as I hope. We'll just leave it where it is. So to solve it, we need to first square the binomial on the right. Remember when we do that, we do not just distribute the 2 through. We can't do that because of the adding. We square the first term, and then we take the product 6x twice. 6x and 6x is 12x and then square the last term, 6 squared is 36. Now we like the equation to equal 0 before we can factor it, so we're going to subtract x squared, subtract 12x, and subtract 36 from both sides. Keeping x squared positive, we end up with 15x squared minus 12x minus 36 equals 0. And we'll notice there's a greatest common factor as we try and factor this of 3. So let's factor that greatest common factor of 3 out, leaving 5x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. From here, we've got some choices on what we can do with what's left inside the parentheses. We could either complete the square or use the quadratic formula or we can factor it, and it doesn't really matter which method you use, you're going to end up with the same final result. I'm going to factor this, because it's easy to get the 5x squared by 5x times x. And if we put 2 and 6 in, with a minus 2 and a plus 6, that would give us negative 10 on the outside, plus 6 on the inside, negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4 in the middle. If you want a review of more in-detail factoring, you can go back and review those factoring videos a while back, or you could have solved this also by completing the square, lots of ugly fractions, or the quadratic formula, which wouldn't have been too bad either. But now that it's factored, we can set each factor equal to 0. There's no variables in the GCF, so we'll ignore that. 5x plus 6 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. We can solve the first equation by subtracting 6, 5x equals negative 6, and then divide both sides by 5 to get x is equal to negative 6 fifths. The other equation, add 2 to both sides, and x is equal to 2. However, before we say that this is our final answer, we need to remember that x is representing the side of a square. The side of a square is not going to be negative, so we can throw this answer out. Our only remaining answer is x must equal 2. The original square must have been a 2 by 2 square. We found that answer by showing the small square and the big square, showing their areas algebraically, and using that to make an equation we could solve by either factoring or the quadratic formula.